Hello friends, it's Brother Ray here. Welcome to our Sanctuary series. I hope that you will tune in to learn more about the Sanctuary as I go through this series. Every week I'll be making one video on one specific article pertaining to the Sanctuary and we'll see how it is fitting and tied into our life. Because the Sanctuary is a very important topic. We need to learn about the Sanctuary and we need to know what the Sanctuary signifies and how it relates to our lives. So let's get right into talking about the sanctuary. Now, why was there a sanctuary in the first place? Now, just to give you a quick recap, after Moses freed the people out of Egypt and they were in the wilderness, God wanted to dwell with his people. It was always his desire to dwell with his people and to dwell with us. But because of sin, it separates us from God. So how would God be able to dwell with the people and show the people his ways? also to show the people what he would do for them to save them, how he would proclaim the gospel through the covenant message of the sanctuary to show them how God will be with us. You know, the Bible says, and she shall be for the son and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. God wants to dwell with us and the sanctuary gives us a clear detail of what God wants to do in our life. So we'll be looking at each item throughout the sanctuary and we'll see what they mean. Now, let's see what the Bible says in Exodus 25, 8. The Bible says, and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. According to all that I show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall he make it. Now, this is God giving Moses clear instructions of how to make the sanctuary, what items to put inside and the measurement. But if you look at verse 8 closely, what God says, he says, And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. God wants to dwell with us, brothers and sisters. He wants to be a part of our lives. He wants to be involved in our lives. And he wants us to look towards him. Overview of the sanctuary. We notice that the sanctuary has three compartments. It has the courtyard or the outer courts. And then it has the holy place and then it has the most holy place so the sanctuary consists of three main compartments the first article we see in the outer court is called the altar of burnt offerings now let's look at that article today jump with me in your bibles to exodus 27 and we'll look at verses 1 and 2 and this is what the bible says and thou shalt make an altar of shittim wood five cubits long and five cubits broad the altar shall be four square, and the height thereof shall be three cubits. And thou shalt make the horn of it upon the four corners of thereof. His horn shall be of the same, and thou shalt overlay it with brass. Now we see we have this altar here. What is the purpose of this altar? altar? This altar of burnt offering was used for the sacrifice. The sacrifice of a perfect lamb, which was slain for sins. So when you committed sin or you had sin, you would have to bring a perfect lamb and the priest would actually lay the lamb on this altar and they would light it, which symbolizes your desire or your repentance of sin. It's the same in our lives today. When we give our lives to God, when we repent of sin, we're actually placing our sins symbolically on the altar, repenting and asking God to take away the sins. But now we don't have an altar to place our sacrifice on. So what do we do with our sins? We repent and bring it to Jesus Christ as an act of repentance that he can take away the sins from our lives. Jesus became the lamb who takes away the sin for our lives. So when we come to Jesus and we repent and we ask Jesus to take away our sins, his blood that was shed on the cross takes away our sins for us, which signifies our repentance and our turning away from sin the same way how someone in the sanctuary service would have to bring that lamb, which was symbolizing of their sins when they asked him for repentance. Jesus' blood was shed in the place of that lamb. And now we come to Jesus bringing our sins to Jesus as a repentance, and Jesus basically cleanses our sins 
and help us to overcome and turn away from our sins. So we're seeing that the sanctuary is fitting to our lives today. Remember, it had to be a perfect lamb on the altar to take away the sins. And Jesus was represented of that perfect lamb. So Jesus was a perfect lamb slain for our sins. So now we come to the perfect lamb, which is Jesus Christ, and ask for forgiveness and for the repentance of our sins, and we turn away from those sins. You know, as we imagine the life draining from the innocent lamb, it should remind us of Christ. We can go to the foot of the cross and say, please forgive me. Father, I'm sorry for doing this to your son. I don't want to do it anymore. By your grace, I make the decision to turn away from sin. That's all we need to do. Go to Jesus, ask for forgiveness and repent of our sins, and he will cleanse us. And as he cleanses us, we'll be ready to go into the second article of the sanctuary. So that's the symbol of the altar of sacrifice and what it means when we give our life to Jesus. We decide and commit ourselves that we will repent of our sins, we will turn from our sins, and we ask God for forgiveness and that we've made a commitment that God will come into our life to change us and sanctify us on a daily process so that we can overcome. And after this first step, we'll be ready to go into the second step of the sanctuary, which is the labor. And we will study that next week. So please remember to subscribe to our channel so you'll know when I post the next video about the sanctuary series as we journey through the sanctuary and we'll be looking at the labor in the next study. Until the next time, be blessed, keep studying, and always remember that God is always good. Bye-bye.